Um, hello. <laughs> Asa is back. Hey everyone, this is Living Dead Gal and welcome back to another episode of the Make It or Break It Let's Play series around the Sims 4 um, Finding Love After a Breakup scenario. Uh, this is actually a special episode because this is going to be the series finale. Um, last time, our main character, London, who you see here, was finally able to move out of the living situation where she was living with her ex. He found his soulmate, so we officially completed the scenario. Um, so this is really just sort of going to be an episode of closure, um, because even though the scenario is complete and we got London moved out, we still haven't found love for London, and she really did become our main character. Last episode, we left off with her in this apartment, and it was a bit grungy. There is actually an outline of a dead body um, on the floor over here, so she was not looking too pleased. Now she looks a little bit happier because I went in and used the money that she had um, to do some renovations to the apartment, so we got some new floors, we got some new paint, some new kitchen cabinets put in, everything is furnished. And one thing that if you watch that video, you may have noticed that I put a few pet items out. And that is because I would love to get London a pet. Um, I think she is going to be a cat person. I was kind of bouncing back and forth between whether I wanted to get her a cat or get her a dog. Um, but since it's a city apartment, um, I thought a cat would be good. I mean, I thought a dog would be good for her too because she likes to be active. But um, there's also mice in this apartment. I have kind of tried to cover up some of the mouse holes with different objects, but um, I think that a cat is going to be the way to go for her because one of the things that we have found out that she wants is she would really like to have kids and start a family. Um, and right now she doesn't have anyone to start that kind of a life with. So her being out on her own and kind of venturing out, I think she would definitely want a little fur baby to call her own. One of the key things that we want to do in this episode is we want to pick the person that she um, feels that she belongs with. So we met Derek. Um, we've learned all of his traits. He's an activist, a romantic, um, he's active, and he is a slob. So slob is his negative trait. He didn't have the greatest first impression of her, but his first impression of her is not wrong. He got the impression that she's egocentric, which is true. She had a good impression of him. She's very attracted to him. They're still just kind of in an acquaintances state at the moment, but um, Derek is a really great guy. Our second um, option, Colt, we met him when we were out on a Simda date with him. Um, she knows that he's self-assured and flirty, but she doesn't know his other two traits. She's very attracted to him and they actually achieved the lovebird status because there was a lot of like making out and flirting and stuff when they were out on their date. But London did not have a great first impression of Colt. She thinks he's in dreamland. Um, she sees him as being a bit naive, a bit immature, and not really grounded in reality. And then there is Charlie, who she actually went on a date with very early on in the series. Um, she perceives Charlie as extremely attractive. They're at the lover status as far as their romance, but for as much as they have developed that romance, um, she doesn't know a whole lot about Charlie. As much as they talked and they've been, they were out on two dates together, their first date, and then they also went out shopping together. And she still doesn't know a lot about Charlie. Charlie's a bit closed off. Um, so all she knows is that Charlie's a glutton and that Charlie um, likes fitness painting and video gaming, but we don't know too much else about her. Um, which is unfortunate because actually they even also went out dancing together one night um, at the club. So for as many interactions as she's had with Charlie, they haven't really established a deep connection yet, but she's equally attracted to all of them. Um, there are pros and cons of each person. So we're going to see who London ultimately ends up finding love with um, because we want her to have her happy ending for this series. We are going to see London come back to the channel for another series. 
I am going to be starting a legacy challenge with London. Um, it is going to be the standard legacy challenge, but I'm making a few of my own modifications um, because I wanted to do it a little bit differently. I have a legacy challenge off camera where I'm following those exact rules and staying on the same lot but I want to put a bit of a different spin on it. So I'm going to be working on that and we'll hopefully be bringing that series to the channel in a few weeks. Um, and I will kind of have a little bit more information on that, but this is not the end of London's story. This is just sort of um, the end of her, you know, her life before that. So we're kind of getting the uh, preface to that challenge through this series um, because I really ended up falling in love with this sim and a lot of you have been really supportive and really just engaging with me and talking about the situation and I've really liked getting to um, read your comments and comment back and talk with you guys about the situation that London has been in and I really wanted to bring her back to the channel in some way um, for a larger more challenge based series so more to come on that but Without further ado, let's dive right on in to our finale. Yeah, I'm just gonna have London kind of get through a gig real quick, um, just so she can feel a little bit more secure financially. And then we are going to look into adopting a kitten for her. And she got hot daydreaming about Colt. Okay, so she's definitely still thinking about Colt. All right, so she is going to adopt a cat. Oh, guys, they're all really cute. How am I supposed to pick one? Oh, okay, I, I don't know why. I just feel like Bella, this kitten, sounds really good for her. She is, I think she is spayed? Yeah, so she, Bella's been spayed, which is actually okay because we're in a small place. Tofu is really cute too, but I think that Bella kind of caught my eye, so... We're gonna see if the adoption agency can bring- Where on earth did you get a voodoo doll? London. Where did that- <laughs> She just has a voodoo doll and she just pulled it out of her butt. <laughs> okay. Uh, my sims are just full of surprises. <laughs> I wonder if she wants to use that on Asa. I really don't know where this like cat is that I want to adopt. Okay, Miko's just gonna come in here too, I guess. All right, everyone's just gonna walk right into my apartment. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, the kitten. <gasps> the kitten's here. Okay, let's do a friendly introduction to the little kitty. Oh, come on, Bella. Do you like us? Okay, she seems to like us. Let's give her a big treat. Oh, <gasps> this is cute. Okay, someone brought fruitcake. It seems like her and Bella are a pretty good match. All of these neighbors are distracting me a little bit. <laughs> and this guy is standing way too close to London, but that's okay. Okay, let's go ahead and adopt Bella. I think that this is gonna be a good fit. Are you sure you want to adopt this pet? Yes. Okay, Bella Benoit, because that is our last name and we'll keep her name. Oh, I hope Bella's a glutton. Well, that's great. <laughs> we got a little glutton cat. Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. <laughs> oh, I love cats so much. Oh, so this is really, really cute. I love this. London is getting a relatively, like, just time to relax and enjoy life. All of her tension and stuff is just gone. She's like overall happy. She's doing really good with her freelance career. She has a new little fur baby. Um, things are going really well. <laughs> okay, so she <laughs> is simstagramming her pet. Of course the pet is like in a hair pile and not quite looking at us, but that's fine. As a celebrity, London has become accustomed to excellent quality meals. Eating food that doesn't meet her hefty expectations will make her uncomfortable. Oh, well great. She Developed a fame quirk. That's awesome. Because she's famous from hacking. <laughs> I should have opted her out of fame, but part of me kind of likes the idea that she gets famous and Asa doesn't. Look at the difference. Look how far we have come. Look how far we've come, guys. Look how much happier she is. Oh. 
Oh my gosh, you guys, London has reached level nine of programming. I'm just sitting here doing like a little bit of a grind with her, but she can now make computer games. She is like really taking a journey from where we were at the beginning of this series. So London right now is just calling Derek and letting him know that she's moved out. Um, just kind of chatting with him, catching up, seeing how he's doing. Um, Cause she really feels like she found a pretty decent friendship with Derek. So, Colt actually called us and wants to go on a date. Hmm. Let's go ahead and accept because we're going to give each of them an opportunity. And I'm going to like let them kind of chat autonomously and see what happens. Hmm. So London has learned that Colt is a snob. They're definitely just like talking at like a weird distance from each other. This is a really weird date, you guys. I'm actually kind of surprised. They didn't even do like the greeting kiss or anything like how um, her and Charlie did when they had their second date. London says you're really attractive, Colt, and I hope that you can see that. <laughs> so when she compliments Colt, it's mainly about his looks. <laughs> I'm trying not to do too much interference because I'm trying to see what London picks. So yeah, there's really not a whole lot of romantic interaction happening between these two, um, despite them being like a little bit hot and heavy on their date the other night. So I'm not sure if London's just, I mean, she did tell Colt that he was attractive autonomously. I did not tell her to do that. Um, so this isn't really much of a date. This date is kind of lame. I mean, we're just standing out here and there's been no romantic interaction. Um, she's told Colt how much she finds him attractive, but, uh, now she's over here talking to the guy with shaving cream on his face. So uh, the fact that she's going over and talking to him before her date, I'm just, I'm not really sure. <laughs> now she's falling asleep. Okay. So Colt said, well, I guess this is goodbye. Um, don't call me ever. Wow. Okay, so that was kind of a weird date. They talked, but there was absolutely nothing that happened. Hmm. And he said, don't call me ever. So I'm not super sure that uh, he's the right choice. That was awkward. They met at the door there. I don't know. He just kind of didn't seem that interested. He asked her on a date, but then he didn't make any moves or anything like that. Um... Even after she told him he was really attractive, he just didn't really react. So I don't really know if, um, I don't know if Colt is the one, guys. Like, there's definitely romance there, but I'm not really thinking that that's going to work out too well. I definitely need to get London on a better schedule. <laughs> she eats very weird hours of the evening. Oh so yeah, she had kind of a weird date with Colt. Um... She's back home and she's kind of like, eh, I mean, he's attractive and everything. He would be a good rebound, but he kind of just blew me off. So I'm not sure that she even really is going to want to pursue any kind of a rebound with him because when they talked, they were like very distant from each other. And um, she told him she thought he was attractive and he really didn't have much of a reaction. So... I don't think Colt is it, you guys. I really don't. Um, despite how much they were getting along during their sim to date, they just don't have a, they don't have much of a connection. They haven't even gotten any sentiments with each other other than those first impressions. London has a bit of a weird schedule. She likes to do a lot of hacking at like two or three in the morning, but that's okay. Part of that is the fun of the freelancer lifestyle. And she actually, okay, London just maxed her programming skill. So that is amazing. So we've really come a long way with her and her journey. She's got a little fur baby now. She's got her own place. She's gained some fame. She's maxed the programming skill. Um, things are going really, really well, I think. <sighs> and we've got a little mouse friend. <laughs> She's just in her house dancing and having a great time and happy with her current life state. <laughs> um, now, today, she is just gonna get ready for the day 
and contact Derek because she needs to hang out with some friends for a little bit. She wants to, you know, she's happy. She wants to kind of talk with some people about um, what's going on in her life. So she is going to go ahead and give Derek a call. Okay, so as soon as Derek came in, she got the sentiment, liked Sim nearby. There's a Sim nearby with whom London feels in tune, even though they barely know each other at all. So that's really cute. Okay. So she's just giving him an update, letting him know uh, what happened with her living situation. They're just kind of catching up and kind of deepening their friendship a little bit. <laughs> she's singing about TV season premiere. Oh yeah, it's TV season premiere. So maybe, <laughs> maybe they can watch that together. <laughs> he seems to like Bella. <laughs> so I guess that's the show off pet interaction. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that was anticlimactic. Okay, they're going to watch the TV premiere together. Hopefully they like that. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with Derek. Oh, probably the like dead body thing. She's like, uh, I just put a rug there to cover it up. So how about we don't worry about that? <laughs> okay, so they have started flirting. They're, he came over to watch the new TV season premiere with her. Um, he accepted her flirt. He's in a very flirty mood. So London and Derek are getting along pretty well. Um... <laughs> They're talking to each other just kind of about their love life and how things haven't been going super well. Um, Derek is feeling super, super flirty. Throughout the conversation, London got the impression that Derek finds her quite attractive, making her wonder if she has the right idea. So she's kind of starting to realize that, you know, she's super attracted to Derek. She wasn't really sure if he was interested in her, but she's starting to realize um, that maybe maybe Derek does have an interest in her and maybe there is something there. They're just having a good time, just kind of vibing with each other, um, talking, getting to know one another, being a little bit flirty, but no one has made a move yet. And Derek seems to be a little bit unsure of himself. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. She's unsettled by the odor. She's noticing a smell in the apartment. That's the dead body. <laughs> She's super flirty. And her and Derek are definitely starting to <laughs> see each other in a bit of a different way. Oh, okay, so now they're kind of doing some autonomous romantic interactions. Oh gosh, there's that odor from that body outline. <laughs> I don't know how to fix that. She's definitely feeling super flirty. <laughs> So what started as a friend's hangout actually turned into <laughs> a pretty flirty experience. Um, they're just kind of autonomously flirting with each other. So they've kind of spent the entire day together. It's late and they have just had their first kiss. And I kind of screwed up getting a screenshot of it. <laughs> but yeah, so they have just had their very first kiss. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and he just jumped into her arms. That's funny. <laughs> London is strong because this is a pretty muscular man. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So now they're just doing stuff a lot like autonomously on their own. Oh, okay. And now London and Derek are doing a little slow dance. <laughs> My sons love doing their slow dances. Okay, so I keep running into an issue where Derek keeps going home because it's like registering as a friend's hangout and it keeps ending the event and I'm just having a hard time getting him to stay here. So that's fine. Um, we're going to clean everything up and just kind of go ahead and... Uh, 
have London maybe settle in, do a little bit of work tonight since she's a bit of a night owl with her programming and uh, go from there. Maybe tomorrow we will touch base with Charlie and kind of see where things are with her. London is very happy. She actually has this uh, remembering the first kiss moodlet and she's also um, her happiness is being boosted from her first kiss with Derek. So not sure if the one she's remembering is the one with Derek. Um, I think so. I think she keeps thinking about it and she's really, really happy. Um, this is probably the happiest we've seen her this entire series, which is great. I love that she's in her own new space and she's kind of in her element here. Oh, great. We've got cockroaches. All right, London, you're going to have to get up and try to eradicate those because that's disgusting. I feel so bad that I put up put her in this kind of a situation. <laughs> I really didn't mean to. At least I gave her like cute decorations and stuff. <laughs> okay, London and Bella have just become good friends, so that's cute. So she's bonding with her little fur baby. <laughs> it is the next day. You've gotten a lot done for work. Why don't we go ahead and invite Charlie out with us? So they're just actually going to like a little bar or restaurant, um, nothing formal or anything. Um, okay, London got an attractiveness alert as soon as she saw Charlie. So I am kind of curious how they will react towards one another, but let's go ahead and get them some food. So they're just going to chit chat a little bit and kind of talk more because London feels like even though her and Charlie have gotten really friendly, she hasn't learned enough about her. So she just now learned that Charlie is creative. Okay, and she's learned that Charlie's active. So Charlie's finally kind of opening up a little bit more. Um, although, okay, she keeps walking away from us. I guess she's tired. Is she going to go take a nap on the bench? Oh, oh, wow. Okay, she just up and left us. <laughs> well, that didn't go super well. That didn't quite go uh, how I planned at all. Um... Charlie just bounced. As soon as she told us some of her traits, she just left. So that was a bit of a bummer. You know what? Let's invite Derek to come out. Oh, they were just over here slow dancing. I was trying to find him <laughs> and they were just over here slow dancing and I missed it. So her and Derek are just having like a cute little time. She got ditched. Um, she was trying to sort of figure out her feelings with Charlie because now she's met Derek um, and she had kind of a weird encounter with Colt. And so now, you know, Charlie just kind of bounced. She told her a little more about herself and then she didn't really want to spend any more time with London. So London, you know, she called Derek because she was still thinking about kind of everything that went down with them the other night. And she wants to kind of talk about her feelings and how he's feeling. And she's just kind of explaining to him how she's a little bit scared to jump into stuff just because of everything that's happened in the past. She's, she's a little bit scared to dive right in. She's a little bit scared um, of getting her heart broken again. And so Derek's, you know, he decided to head out and he's like, well, let me know when you know what you want and what you're looking for. So London kind of needs to think about what does she want and who does she want and what's going to make her the happiest, um, you know, after everything that she's been through with Asa. And she's kind of disappointed because she thought her and Charlie had a pretty good connection and Charlie just kind of bounced on her. Um, so she is going to go home and spend a little bit of time with her fur baby and maybe take a little nap and do a little bit of thinking because her date with, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Did you guys just catch that? Um, hello. <laughs> Asa is back. Okay. <laughs> So I was gonna have her 
go home, and then I was going to have her maybe call Asa to talk. But they definitely side-eyed each other when they were running by, so I think now might be a good time. She happened to run into Asa as she was kind of reflecting on things. Um, who is- he also happens to be flirty, so we need to be careful. <laughs> um, so she's kind of had some space and some time away from him um, since she's moved out and she actually appreciated him and said you're a really fun person Asa it's nice having you around so they're kind of like working on mending things now that they're out of each other's space um, and he she kind of asked him how things were going with Isabella he said yeah I'm seeing someone um, so they're kind of talking a little bit about his relationship with Isabella and how that's going and trying to kind of find some common ground. Um, a lot of that resentment has definitely faded. Um, I mean, if you look at their relationship, they're still total opposites. Uh, something is broken uh, here, but um, all of the bitter sentiments they had early on in the series, those are all gone. Um, so it's definitely getting, things are getting a lot better. I um, mean, we're still all in the red, but we're not like all the way up here like we were last episode. <laughs> so they're both realizing that they've kind of moved on and they're both in way better places than they were together. And a lot of those hard feelings are starting to go away. You know, they're having a much easier time talking with one another now that they're not quite so hostile anymore. Um, you know, obviously they're broken up, um, but they're able to kind of talk about things that they haven't talked about in a while. And a lot of it is like some of their interests that kind of got them together to begin with. She's kind of asking him a little bit about how work is going for him and how things are going, you know, with Isabella. And she's kind of letting him know that she's really happy with the apartment. They're just kind of catching up and they're actually having a pleasant conversation for the first time in this entire series, I'm actually seeing little green friendly signs pop up. <laughs> They're even like autonomously talking relatively nicely to one another. She actually complained about a first kiss. I'm not sure who she was complaining about, but it wasn't him because they got the little positive friendship sign. Things are finally starting to go pretty well for them at this point. Um, don't worry, this isn't actually a romance interaction. She's just gonna ask him, you know, if her, if he and Isabel, Isabella are thinking about having kids. Um, funny, I didn't even put that together. Her cat's name is Bella and then her ex ended up with an Isabella, but we'll just ignore that. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've almost completely gotten rid of the red. So it's actually kind of interesting how much easier it was to kind of repair their friendship at least um, with them not living together because it was definitely a lot harder when they were living together and they just kept getting so tense around each other. So I mean, I think that's kind of, um, you know, positive of the scenario. It does add a bit of a challenge to the game. Um, so looks like they kind of finished chatting. Um, that kind of put some things in perspective for London. You know, she's been scared of putting her heart out there and of getting hurt, but you know, she just kind of got a little bit of closure for once. Um, she finally kind of was able to get rid of some of the hostility that she's been holding on to. Um, based on everything that happened with Asa and, you know, her having to find a new place to live and her living situation and seeing him with someone else. And so she finally feels a little bit more clear headed about things. Um, you know, she had several romantic options throughout the series. Um, and she's kind of learning now what she actually wants. So things obviously didn't work out with Asa in the long run, but that's okay. Um, now, then we had Emmett, who we met earlier in the series, and um, it doesn't look like they, she has the grudge anymore, so they don't hate each other, but they're now just acquaintances, um, and their, their stuff is mostly in the red. Um, as far as uh, Colt goes, 
they have very, very little pink. Like, they had built up a lot of pink, um, a lot of romance when they first met, but then they had a really weird, awkward date um, when they went out shopping, and they just kind of, like, weren't really getting along. Maybe just the combination of the alcohol and the date setting the first night had them kind of interested in each other based on a purely an attraction standpoint, but the connection really hasn't seemed to be there. And then her and Charlie definitely had a huge romantic connection, um, but then as soon as she kind of started to learn more about Charlie, Charlie kind of freaked out and left. Um, so Charlie's a bit closed off. Um, and then there's Derek. And Derek and her are currently sweethearts. Um, he has keys, but it's just because it was a glitch with me getting him in the door, so don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, her and Derek are kind of in the sweetheart stage right now. They're definitely really um, liking one another and really enjoying each other's company and they're, they're good friends, but, um, London has been a little bit scared of getting her heart broken again. Oh, Bella has grown in, Bella aged up. Bella has grown from a kitten into an adult cat. Oh, okay, so she can climb the stairs now. Oh, that was fast, but look, look at our little Bella. She's aged up into a cat. She's so cute. Okay, so we'll have to do a little bit of playing with her. London has done some reflecting. She was working on wrapping up her work assignment. Her mind was a little bit distracted based on like the current state of her love life. Um, she's also very distracted by all of the mice in the house. I was hoping maybe the cat would help with it, but uh, Bella is a little more interested in sleeping. <laughs> So, first things first, let's travel. We are going to have a quick little chat with Colt. And she's gonna let him know, um, even though she knows nothing serious was going on with them, that she kind of feels like, you know, she wants to make sure they're on the same page and that they kind of know that this isn't really going anywhere and, um, while she had fun on their first date, she's kind of feeling like this is not a romance that is going to work for us. So they decided to cool off their romantic relationship. No harm, no foul. Um, her and Colt are still friendly um, and that seemed to work out pretty well. So they're just going to kind of have a little chat. Um, they're actually, their friendship is going up more now that some of that romance is gone. So. Everything's pleasant between them. There's no bad blood. Um, they had a fun first date and that was about it. That's really all that they are to each other. So uh, London has kind of realized Colt's not the right person for her and she's probably not the right person for him. So she's making some decisions about her romantic life and she realizes she just doesn't want to leave anything open-ended because the closure that she had with Asa the other day was really beneficial to her and she wants to make sure that she's kind of closed every door um, that she has opened, you know, since the breakup and that she kind of has a clear path romantically. And so she has also invited Charlie out. Uh, just they walked over to the park that's nearby. They both live in different apartment complexes in San Maestrino. And she wants to kind of talk to Charlie a little bit about um, what kind of how Charlie's feeling and what happened with them and their relationship. She wants to kind of understand Charlie's perspective and make sure that the two of them are on the same page as well. And they're just kind of talking and they're learning um, that despite kind of some of that initial attraction, um, Charlie's not really fully looking for what London is right now. She knows that London's kind of serious about wanting to settle down and start a family soon. So that's kind of the end of um, her and Charlie as London pulls out a fruitcake. Um, you know, they really could have been compatible and they really could have been a good match, but they're just kind of at different places in their lives. It's not quite the love match that either of them were hoping for, maybe at a different time in their lives. So now she wants to go home and 
she wants to think about the other person in her life. Um, and that's Derek. And her and Derek, she had a friendship with him and it's kind of blossomed into something more. And she isn't sure how to feel about it and she's very scared. Um, she's scared of getting her heart broken again. But she's just gonna watch a movie, kind of clear her head. Um, and just think about, you know, she told two great people that they weren't really right for her and she has another decision to make. Um, is the person that she developed a strong friendship with and a budding romance with, is that the one for her? Is that the person she wants in her life? London has invited Derek out um, to the same place where they first met, right near the little fishing pond. And she has decided that she wants to talk to him kind of about where they stand. He said, call me when you have things figured out. And she finally does. And she realizes that she missed him and she missed being away from him. And <laughs> oh, this holding hands interaction is really cute. <laughs> And she missed being away from him. Um, and she definitely wants something a little bit more than friendship with him. She is going to ask him if he will make things official with her. <laughs> and they just became boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> I can say that she has definitely found someone that she is happy with. But yeah, she has definitely found the right person for her. Um, Derek is a family-oriented kind of man. Um, he's an activist. He's a good person with a good heart. Um, and he is looking for all the things that she's looking for. He wants to settle down. He wants to start a family. And on top of that, they're both very, very attracted to each other. And even though he didn't have the best first impression of her, he gets her. You know, he doesn't have an illusion of who she is as a person. He knows that she is a little bit self-absorbed and he still likes her anyway. So, um, ultimately, Derek is the right person for London and Derek is the one that she has decided to be with. Um, you know, Derek came over to her apartment and they were hanging out and they ended up having some autonomous romance and things. Um, whereas both Charlie and Colt were a little bit distant when London went out with them and, uh, you know, Colt especially was like, eh, this isn't a good date. And then Charlie just kind of disappeared on us. And I just think that based on London's personality and based on all of the different sentiments, um, that Derek is the right one. And I think in a way his negative first impression of her was a good thing because he recognizes that she's not perfect. Yeah, I think they're definitely happy and they built like a really cute little gnome sand sculpture together. So I think now that they're together, um, I think there's maybe one more quick thing that we gotta do. <laughs> now they are uh, back <laughs> at London's place, um, just kind of happy that they have found each other um, <laughs> and just kind of spending some time together um, and enjoying the newness of their relationship. And you know, London has really come a long way. <laughs> okay, that is like so precious. That is so cute, you guys. I I love them. I really love them. Um, you may have you may know this from like uh, previous videos. I was kind of hoping for her and Charlie to be endgame, but I've really really grown to like her and Derek. And just based on everything that's happened, all of the sentiments and everything, I think that they're the ones who belong together. I think they're super excited that they found one another. Um, and you know, I think that one thing <laughs> leads to another and they have decided to, uh, make the most of everything and really celebrate the fact that they have just now gotten together. 
Um, and they are definitely, definitely excited to have their first woohoo together. Okay, guys, so um, I think we are going to leave it here. Um, this is with this really, really adorable little moment, this little dip kiss uh, between the two of them. Um, I think we are just going to enjoy this moment and leave it off here. Um, <laughs> this is so cute. I love this. Um, yeah, so. This is the end of the Make It or Break It series. Thank you guys so much to everyone who has watched and who has supported and who has commented. This is my very first Let's Play. Um, I kind of was winging it. It was very different because it was based around the new scenario, so I had no idea what to expect. And I also was trying to do some storytelling along with it. So I really, really hope that you guys like the outcome. I hope that you like um, London's decision and uh, her and Derek together. I was definitely team Charlie, but I grew to like Derek more and more over time. And then kind of seeing her experiences with each one of them, the personality traits and the sentiments, I really just felt that this was the right match and that this was who London was telling me was the right person for her. So that is the end of our series. Um, thank you so, so much for watching, for commenting, for liking. Um, I just really, really appreciate all of the love and support. And um, as I said, we are going to see London again in her very own Legacy series, which means we will also be seeing Derek again. Um, I'm just working on some modifications for that and I have a few things to prepare for that. So it might be a week or two before I kind of get that in the works. Um, but in the meantime, you can certainly check out my other videos while you wait for London's return. Um, and I'm super excited to play with her and kind of continue her legacy um, and see more of what her and Derek have going on. Um, and so yeah, we did pretty much everything that we set out to do. Um, I really truly didn't think that I was going to be able to fix her and Asa and get their relationship um, to a better place, but I managed to get them to have a little bit of green. I really didn't think that would happen. Apparently moving her out um, and getting them away from each other made it that much easier because a lot of those grudges died down. Um, but we accomplished that. We completed the scenario. We found her a new love and we got her her own place, uh, which despite all of the issues this episode with the mice and the broken uh, breaker box and everything, it's still a really cute, pretty apartment that I had a great time decorating. Um, and I'm so excited to continue her adventures here, but I wanted to kind of leave off this chapter because in the Legacy Challenge, it'll be a new chapter. It'll be starting her new life. And this was sort of closing out the old chapter of her life um, and opening the door to the next steps for her, which is um, her romance with Derek and kind of what that will lead to. And we'll kind of see. We'll see um, if things work out for them. So again, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed this series. I have had such a good time playing it. And um, if you liked this, um, if you are excited to see more, please give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you're kind of excited to see more of what's going to happen with London in the future um, in her new series outside of this one. Um, and, you know, if you are not subscribed to my channel, feel free to subscribe for more uh series like this and for more Sims 4 videos. Um, that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here. So thank you guys so, so much. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day and I will see you guys in the next video. the fun times we had I'll never forget we